I got to tell you something. There were a lot of teenage kids, a lot of teenage guys who worshipped Eddie Van Halen back in the late 70s. They thought Van Halen, the band, was something else, one of the biggest bands of the late 70s going into the 80s, to the early to mid-80s. Van Halen, I remember... I, I, I remember when I first heard Van Halen, their first album, as a, a album station, album rock station in Birmingham, K99. They played Van Halen's debut album, their first big album. They played it nonstop, the whole album, January 1978. Now I have to admit that was quite a quite an experience. I didn't think Van Halen they were the Beatles. They were not the Stones. They were definitely not Led Zeppelin. But boy, Eddie Van Halen had some blistering picks. This guy could play. And uh, David Lee Roth, a flamboyant, flamboyant, passionate singer. I mean, he just he split some hands right there. Probably split his pants a couple of times on stage, I'm sure, as well. But dad gum it, man. These guys, these guys were hot. They sounded hot. Didn't care too much for that remake of uh, You Got, uh, was it called You Got Me? By the Kinks, that Kinks record that they redid in 78. Wasn't impressed with that. But Janie's Crying and uh, was Let's Talk About Love, I believe, was another one. Oh, man, they just knocked it out. Right out of the park. Not hit records, but still. Solid album cuts, Van Halen. Second album, Van Halen 2. Uh, the song is called Beautiful Girls. Billboard's Hot 100, the week of September 15, 1979. Uh, Beautiful Girls at number 89. It peaked at number 84. A lot of top 40 stations would not play it. Van Halen still considered maybe a bit too hard for a lot of people. Uh, they had that huge hit, though. Summer of 79, Dance the Night Away. That was a huge commercial hit for them. Went to number... Forgot the chart position, number 11, 12 on Billboard's Hot 100. And then they came out with uh, The Cradle of Rock, spring of 1980. You like that one, too. And Beautiful Girls was, was uh, screened between these two records. Beautiful Girls was actually originally called Bring On The Girls. <laughs> that sounds like an apt name for a heavy metal record, for sure, or hair metal song, a Motley Crue record. I can see that being a Motley Crue song, Bring On The Girls. Uh, it was part of a demo. The song was on a demo of 25 songs that they submitted to Warner Brothers. Eventually, they changed the title to Beautiful Girls. Bring On The Girls maybe a little too risque. But uh, the album... The song, oh God, you're not going to believe who produced this song. Think Feeling Groovy. Remember the song Feeling Groovy by, the, by Harper's Bazaar? Probably one of the most laid back folk records. Got that flute going in the background. We're talking about a song that's 360 degrees from anything Van Halen put out. A guy named Ted Templeman was in Harper's Bazaar. He moved into, into engineering and production by the early 70s with the Warner Brothers uh, record label, producing albums by the Doobie Brothers. He also produced the album Montrose, which was by the group. Remember Montrose? If you're in the 70s heavy metal, you probably remember Montrose. Uh, it was founded by Ronnie Mont Montrose, the lead singer of Montrose at that time, Sammy Hagar. It was produced. The album was produced by Ted Templeman. Ted Templeman spotted Van Halen. They were playing. Ted Templeman was wild by Van Halen. He he persuaded Mo Austin. He was the chairman, Warner Brothers chairman, Mo Austin. He told him, "You got to sign these guys, man. These guys, they can play. They sound great. They're hard rockers. They're gonna sell some albums." And they they signed them. They signed Van Halen. And this is beautiful girls. And I did well. You know the weird thing is I appreciate Van Halen now a lot more now than I did back then. Well, here it is. This is Van Halen with beautiful girls at number eighty nine, Billboard's Hot One Hundred, the week of September fourteenth or fifteenth, nineteen seventy nine. 